Hi everyone, Sharon here from Iris Store Stuff. How are you today? Let me know in the comments where you're tuning in from as soon as you've joined us. Let me know. I'm going to be working on some fun thrift store finds. We call them op shops here in Australia. So we talk about going op shopping. So that's where we uh, go to all the thrift stores and find um, just little unique finds that I, what I do with them is upcycle. So I love to find little things in there, some decor items and things like that, that I can upcycle. So let me just um, make sure I've got the live going here. And so I can see your comments. How are you today? How's the weather in your neck of the woods? I'm down under here in Australia and it's a beautiful sunny day. But it's a little cool it's winter here now and um, we where I live is in Queensland and we have very mild winters so this is a bit of a joke we just say well we had like two or three days of winter this year what's it going to be like next year uh, so we don't get freezing cold here very very much at all oh yes we've got comments coming in on the computer so I may have to look down here I can't see any on my phone hi Deb Carol Amanda Judy Oh, Judy, you were on my live earlier this morning. So I just went on live this morning on my own page. So my page is I Restore Stuff. And uh, if you missed that this morning, I will let you know you want to go over there and check out that live because what I did was I was prepping these pieces that I'm about to show you to be able to do them here on the live. So I'll just run through a few things that I, I showed over on my page. Now, there, these are some of the kinds of things that I'll pick up at my thrift stores that are local around here. Now these, you will wanna go over and look on my page later and check out the live because you won't believe what they looked like before. They just had this kind of shabby chic design on them. And what I've done is I've painted them in a base coat of, of a sage color and I've painted the insides also. And then I plan to do something else on the outside of that. I haven't, haven't totally figured it out yet. Maybe I'll put a stencil on here for that or I could do some transfers or something like that. But that's one of those little, it's just a tin. And so you just grab your, your paints and it can change the whole look of some things from the thrift store just with a little bit of paint. So that's what I love to do. Now here are some other things that I am going to be working on today. And one of them, and you won't believe what this looked like earlier either, you'll have to go check it out on my page because what I've done is over there, I went live on I Restore Stuff page and um, oh, Teresa looked at, she watched the other live too. Yeah, hey Teresa. Um, yeah, it, they're looking really different now, aren't they? So <clears throat> this is a, just a signboard. Now what was on the front? It was hanging this way. And it had some picture and saying of like an owl and a bunch of words and things like that. So what I thought was I've completely painted that now with just white chalk paint. And I'm going to turn it on its side. It's got a lovely stained dark wood uh, here. So I'm going to leave that just like that. And we're going to create <clears throat> kind of a farmhouse looking sign. The other thing that you could do with this is use the back side of it. And actually put your sign inside and then you'll have that you know that depth here to show um, like the farmhouse signs which we're going to look, do that kind of a look on another piece here so you could actually have a reversible sign here although the hanging you may have to drill some holes in the top to do some hanging for that but we're gonna I look forward to using a stencil for that now the stencils if you've already had a sneak peek in the description of the live that we're going to use today oh, I'm sitting on them Yeah, Trudy says, definitely a huge improvement on those uh, little tins that I found at the op shop earlier. So these are the sign set that I'm going to be using today on the live. It's called the Antiques Stencil Set. And here's a little picture of all three of them. So they come in a pack of three. They've got the Antiques sign here. And we have the Vintage sign. Now, the other thing about these stencils is look at these lovely embellishments that you can use for all sorts of other things. So you could put this underneath another word, you know, change them up a bit. These, this um, set is really, really interchangeable. So, and also imagine this embellishment here on the top of a dresser or something. If you're a furniture painter, there's another idea for you. And I, if, I don't, if I get time today, I would love to show you some raised stenciling on a board 
using some of these embellishments. Now the other one is the Artisan Market um, stencil. So there's the three in the set and again, some gorgeous embellishments right here that you wouldn't have to use on the side of your sign. You could just use the, do the sign by itself or you could add these embellishments, say to the top of a smaller sign. Um, all sorts of great things you can do with that. So also these, I've seen these uh, do, using the raised embossing technique on drawers. So you could have a set of drawers with that stencil raised just above the drawer knob. You could put the knob in the center there and have these beautiful embellishments on the drawers. So you could also uh, do half an embellishment. Imagine that on a corner of a piece of furniture or on the corner of one side of the drawer. So there's a whole bunch of ideas for you. What was the other one? Oh yeah, so on the antiques one, again, those embellishments, corner uh, flourishes that you can put. Hi Dorothy. Yeah, thank you guys for jumping on and saying hello. And I still haven't shared our live yet, so I might do that now too. But see those embellishments on the corners of these stencils such a um, great second use, like essential stencils, um, just the variations that you can get from all of the stencil sets. Now, don't forget to use my code, I restore stuff for your 10% off at Essential Stencil. Um, use my ambassador code and you'll be able to get 10% off any of the stencil sets, not just the ones I'm using today, anything that you order today put it in your shopping cart, use the iRestore stuff code. If you just use the links that you're given here in the live, in the, um, in the description of the live and Essential Stencil often posts the links here in the comments. So you'll see those come up in a minute if they're not there already. I'm just gonna share this to my group. So if you would love to share the love and share this live with another DIYer, we're op shopping, changing up op shopping uh, finds today, thrift store finds, you would call them. What do you call them in your country? <laughs> I'm just gonna share this to my iRestore stuff group. And then <clears throat> we'll get started. So I showed you one of the signs that I picked up in the op shop. It was facing this way, it had a bunch of words, some owl pictures and things, and uh, it's got lovely stained wood sides. So that's one of them. Now the other thing I picked up, which I'm going to be showing you today, is uh, an, just an old Ikea sign. So. It was a used sign and, oh, a picture frame, sorry, not a sign. So this had the glass in it. So you can imagine this Ikea frame, <laughs> sorry, I could, there it is. It's a long, uh, long frame. So you could use it this way, but a lot of essential stencil stencils are exactly the size. So when I saw this, I'm like, I need that for my essential stencil live. So I picked this up yesterday, actually. I took the glass out and when you find these boards, that uh, when you have find picture frames, sorry, that have really nice backing boards on them, like it's fairly sturdy, it's actually an MDF material. When you find those, I like to grab them. The, um, it doesn't work as well with the ones with just cardboard in it. Uh, if you do find a good frame and it does have just a, a, um, a not so good quality backing, you can also just cut one out of MDF if you're handy with the tools and that kind of thing. So I have taken out the glass and I'm taken out the board and I've painted one side of it. So I also did this on my live this morning over on my I Restore Stuff page. You can go and check that out after our live here today and have a look at what this looked like beforehand and some of the other op shop finds that I just showed you earlier to see what they looked like before. All right, so that's what we're working on. So I've uh, painted a background for it. Now, here's my idea, guys. So this has quite a deep um, frame, so it's kind of chunky. On the back of it, here's my idea. I want to stain the back and create, like I was talking about with that other one before, we've got this depth in here, so create. I'm going to stain the, the frame and create a farmhouse sign with one of the stencils across here. Okay, so that's what I'm working on. But first, what I also had to do, and I've removed most of them, but I just wanted to leave a couple here to show you how to do that. And now I've lost my pliers to be able to remove. Oh, here they are. 
I'll show you what I'm removing. So you can see them here, those little, uh, I don't even know what you call them. Might even be, a, that one's fairly loose. But these are the things that hold the board in place. Those little things there. So I've got to remove those for my idea. And instead of putting the board in place with those, so they just came out with a pair of pliers, just like that. Little metal things, whatever your frame has used to do that. So they're just those little picture frame holding glass inner things. Okay, and guys, a reminder, don't go anywhere because what we're gonna do at the end is we pick, always pick three winners on our live. So what I need to do now is just give that, where those little um, metal parts came out, I'm just going to sand that really quickly. And I'll see if I can point your camera down, we go. So you can see what I'm working on here. So I've just got my sanding glove, I'm just gonna sand that. There. And it's not filling in the holes, but it just kind of gives it a bit of a, um, a cleaner if it's kind of come up and raised a little bit. So I've actually sanded the whole thing. Uh, I should probably have sanded right back to raw wood. It's still got a little bit of varnish on there. I'm hoping my idea works even with that varnish there. So what I want to do now is just show you how I can stain this. I'll set my board aside. We'll be stenciling that in just a minute. What I've done is I've just mixed a little bit of chocolate paint, well it's chocolate colour, in with water to create a stain. And so it's very watery. So all I'm doing is, you can use any acrylic water-based paints and just make a wash or a stain from those. I don't want to splash my nice white boards, so I'll put those way out of the way. My squeaky chair, I don't know if you can hear that. All right, so I'm just dipping my brush into the stain and oh, let me see if you can see that. Just painting a bit on here. See how it's that chocolatey brown color? I'm just going to stain the timber with that. And if the sides don't work out as nicely as I'd like them to, because this is raw wood inside, but it's actually uh, not raw here. It's kind of, but let me see if it just might paint on that doesn't look too bad. I've got some stop start marks there, which I always just kind of make sure I've covered it well. See all those little stop, stop, stop marks? And then we go over it just with one nice smooth stroke. And it kind of looks like wood grain anyway as we go across. So I've kind of created a, a darker finish there and I'm staining the inside as well. So I'll just go over that staining the inside part here. And right in here, this is where we want to be all nice and stained to create our lovely sort of farmhousey look. Yes, who else loves garage sales and thrift stores? Show me your hearts. Christina says, I love going to thrift stores, garage sales, yard sales for some stencil project stuff. Absolutely. outside's last because I'm making sure you can all see here it's a little bit awkward for me to hold. <laughs> yes, there's the hearts. We love our upcycling. It's sure beats seeing things go to landfill when you can upcycle things and make them a little a little bit different. Staining the base, staining the insides here. Can you kind of get the picture? Can you kind of see that it would look nice? Now, because I have watered down the acrylic paint, it's, and this is fusion paint, so fusion in general, it has a, a built-in top coat, but because we've watered it down, that wouldn't be as effective as a top coat, uh, you know, as a sealed paint right now. So what I will do is seal that when I'm finished with a sealer. Oh, actually that back bit really doesn't matter because that's where my board is going to cover it up. Okay. You can still see the grain of the wood. I've created a bit of a stain there. And I'll go around these outsides and we'll see how they look. But like I said before, I think it's... Um, I may have to go over it twice. 
see if we can see that there. Sorry, guys. If I'm trying my best to <laughs> keep it in view as I try and paint it. Probably getting this all over my hands. Oh, Brenda says she hasn't been able to catch a live in some time. Glad you could make it today, guys. I'm really glad that you're all here. Okay, so we're just brushing out all my stop-start marks and it kind of looks a little bit like green. And then last side over here. Whoops. <clears throat> Julie from Iowa just started stenciling. So far, I love it. Julie, I love that. It's amazing. All right. So I'm finished with my stain that I've created using some watered down paint. Um, oops. Brush off there. I think I'm finished with that for now anyway. I'll fix anything else up later. So see how we've just created a whole new look on that frame. And like I said before, I'll seal that with some sealer. I'll set that aside for now. And we'll work on our, making sure my hands are clean now. Hi Sherry from Northern Illinois. Okay, so this is, if you missed it before, here are, here are the stencils that I'm working on today. Now, a lot of the uh, essential stencils are perfect for these rectangular signs. So if you're a sign maker and if you're, um, you know, selling them in your shop, also I love the local honey one. That's the kind of one that would be perfect on one of these as well. I wanted to remind you too, look, you could just make all sorts of signs with our Stencil of the Month Club. If you're not in the Stencil of the Month Club, just another little look at what the Stencil of the Month Club has this month and beautifully designed by Heidi Easley right here is all these fun camping, hiking, uh, adventure signs. Let's call it the Adventure Pack. So Heidi's obviously an adventure girl and I love it. There are so many different things. This is the bonus add-on, by the way. If you opt for the add-on, you can get that in too. But imagine, you can just do all sorts of things with those mountains on other signs and the arrows and all of that kind of fun stuff. So I look forward to doing that and I think I'm due to do one of these next week for the Stencil of the Month Club is to create some project with this. So don't forget to join me next week for that. The other thing I did want to mention too, if you are a sign maker, we are now into the next half of the year. Can you believe 2020 has gone so quickly? And what a crazy year it has been. It'll forever go down in the history books, won't it? All right, so I might make this my antique sign. Let's see the other ones. So if you are a sign maker, you're going to be looking at the uh, third quarter as one of your making times. So I just wanted to remind people, let me have a little chat to you for a second. I just wanted to remind people that Essential Stencil still has in stock things like Christmas stencils, Halloween stencils, fall home decor. So if you're a sign maker, don't forget to get in early and, just, and uh, get some of those stencils for your stenciling projects because if you're a retailer, you'll want to be getting those ready ahead of time. So don't forget there's some of those still in the shop there. Just, um, you know, use the little search bar and search Halloween or use the search bar, uh, search Christmas and get ahead of your sign making so that you can take a vacation at Christmas time. That's what I'm thinking. So, okay guys, here's our project. Let me see what we're going to work on today. <clears throat> Artisan market or antiques? I think we'll go with the antiques. And I think that I'm gonna leave the flourishes off for this one, because I kind of want it to look more farmhousey and less frilly. So, oh, you know what I did forget is my painter's tape, and I will get that for now, just see if I can reach with my little microphone cord that's on here at the moment. Talk amongst yourselves. I'm right here. Okay, so painter's tape is our friend. 
and I don't want to get I've just painted this this morning if you joined me over on my I restore stuff page you'll know that I I did paint this only a couple of hours ago so what I want to do with my painter's tape I don't want it to be too sticky because and I don't want to put it on the board I want it to go on this flourish here to just cover it up so I don't accidentally uh, let, me, let me go closer so that I don't accidentally um, when I'm doing the A, I don't want my brush to go over here. So I'm gonna cover that up. But here's a trick that if you're using painter's tape, just put it on some fabric and then tear it off. And then it's not as sticky on the back. It gets a little bit of fluff on there so that it's not as tacky and sticky. And I'm just gonna tape that right there. And same with the S over on this side. a little bit of light reflecting in my big workshop room here okay now I've got to center my sign and remember our little op shop find yeah that's about center there and I'm not going to tape it you can though if you like but make sure your paint is really really dry and you can also do that little um, rub on fabric technique or even on your skin and just add a touch here so that your paint doesn't peel off, okay? All right, now this piece of paper here is just going to be what I will use to just offload. I'm gonna use some Fusion Coal Black today to do our antique sign. We just want a farmhousey kind of look. So the black and white and the wood is all super lovely. So I'm using an, a Klingon brush. This is just a round Klingon brush and I've just taped or rubber banded that banded the bristles to make them less flexible and just a little bit more stiff so that that'll be a lovely surface for me to do the stenciling on. So I just tapped the end of my brush. I don't need a lot of paint at all. In fact, I'm just gonna wipe some of that back onto the container and you'll see how much comes on there. Then we just offload. If you haven't stenciled before, there was a couple of new people to stenciling here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just scrolling through our comments. Oh, Sharon says, I've been wondering what to do with this stencil. So excited to see this. Yeah, and I hope you um, didn't miss the ideas I also gave you for those little flourishes that you can see on all three of the stencils. There's a lot of great flourishes that you can use for furniture and the sides of drawers and things like that. Okay, I've offloaded my brush on the paper. Now I'm just going to do some really light swirls here. and create our antique sign. Now, just do it gently. If you find that not enough paint's coming on, you can push a little harder. But the way not to get paint bleeding through underneath your stencil is, the key is offloading your brush. Everybody say after me, offload, offload. <laughs> I feel like the teacher. Okay, so just dipping my paint in again, again, wiping that off because we do have a lot on the side, offloading the brush on the paper so that we don't get a lot of paint on the brush. And if I do that swirly motion, it just kind of helps the paint fill in all the little crevices or brush strokes on the paint if you're using chalk paint. But because we're creating a rustic farmhouse antique look, you don't even really have to have a true solid, solid look. It's a great classic font, this antiques sign. It's kind of old school. Okay, offloading there. Oops, got a bit too much on my brush there. And again, I've taped off those little flourishes on the end because I'm just wanting a bit of a farmhousey look for this one. But if you wanted more of the antiques, like a French provincial kind of look, I would definitely add those flourishes to your sign. And if you missed the beginning, I showed you, and you can go back and watch the replay, I showed you a bunch of uh, op shop finds or thrift store, things I found in the thrift store here locally uh, that I can upcycle. And so a couple of those, I went over on my page, my Iris Store Stuff page, 
and up and uh, did the preparation of this board beforehand over there. So this board comes out of a picture frame, if you missed that bit. All right, are we ready? There you go, nice and crisp lines because we offloaded. I hope that's centered, I think it is. So I'll show you really closely so you can see the nice crisp lines there. There's no bleeding because we offloaded that brush as much as we could. Now, the key also, if you're new to stenciling and you're a little bit worried about getting that bleed underneath, practice, practice on a piece of paper. Just practice on some butcher's paper or a cardboard box. Just practice on those things. It doesn't take a lot of paint and honestly, it's worth just practicing to get that right so that you don't ruin your nice project and have to sand it back and start again and um, fix up the little bleedings. So that's my tip. Now let's see what that looks like inside the frame. So here's our frame. Remember it was just a picture frame and it goes this way but I'm turning it around so that we have a nice deep um, and I've taken out the little picture holder thing. So what I'm going to do is glue this in. I've turned my board backwards. So it's kind of a reverse upcycle. There we go. So we'll have to glue that in or staple it in or something. But now we've got a gorgeous farmhousey sign. How's that? And we've got nice deep sides there. And remember I stained the insides with the watered down paint. What do you think of that? So who wants to try that now? That's my one, number one fun idea. Now for our next sign, let's try that down here for a second. Also, you want to just clean off your stencils as soon as you can, just with a wet cloth or some people use baby wipes. Um, if I leave it dry, that paint's going to dry super hard. Ellen says, thanks for the brush tip. Yes, it is um, offloading, you mean? <clears throat> or even the brush, putting the rubber band around it. That's another tip that I've found helpful. And you'll notice that um, Essential Stencil goes live every day with different ambassadors. So everyone has different techniques of doing their stenciling. So you find the one that best suits you and on your practice paper or your practice cardboard, just have a go at all the different kinds. Some people use um, stencil brushes, some people use uh, makeup sponges, there's all kinds of different things you can use to do your stenciling. So, so I'll let that dry now. <clears throat> and the link for these stencils is up at the top of the description on the live. So we've got the Vintage Sign or Artisan Markets. Guys, which one should I use? Let's have a little vote in the comments for our next board. Tell me, vintage or artisan markets? Ready to go. <clears throat> and that's gonna go on this sign. So what we did, I got this sign, which was, you can see the marks here going across here where there was a string and I took the string off. Now, again, you could do the same idea as I did with that other board and stain the inside, paint this inside section white and have that nice, deep looking uh, groove in there for the farmhouse sign. But what I did was, this was the actual picture, so it had an image on this side here, and it was facing this way with some owls and some words and all that kind of thing. And um, I've just painted it white with some chalk paint. So I painted over the picture that was on there. It was a little bit of a glossy surface, so I scuff sanded that, and then I've uh, just gone over that with some chalk paint and painted it white. So let's see, what do our comments saying what I should do. Which one is the voted vintage or artisan markets? Just gonna have a little scroll peek. Vintage, artisan, vintage, 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 artisan, market, artisan, artisan. Oh guys, we're, mm, I think vintage might be ahead. Vintage, vintage, artisan market. Alrighty, um, vintage it is. We're gonna do the vintage sign. Now this time, why don't we do that? I might use my 3D raised stenciling embossing uh, powder to do that, that little flourish there. 
Okay, so with the vintage part, I will, mm, don't know what to do first, to paint that or not to paint that. Yes, I'll paint it first since we've got our black brush out here ready to go. So if you want to see some raised stenciling, I'm about to do that on that little flourish down there. Again, we want to probably use that bit of tape. I'll just use the same tape that I was using on this. And we just want to, it's not too bad, but I might just put it there to avoid painting over those flourishes because I'm going to do that separately. With some embossing medium. Okay, I've offloaded my brush and off we go again. I'm holding this down with my hand. Again, you could tape it if you're really unsure about whether you're going to move the stencil. But I'm just really pressing very lightly and giving a little swirl. And this is how we get nice crisp lines. scroll my comments here. Yeah, taping is a good idea. If your brush is going too close to those flourishes and you don't want to get the flourishes, it's a little bit tricky because you don't want to have just this little splash of paint. You could always paint over it, I suppose, but it's easier to prevent mistakes than try and fix them. Sometimes, you know. A little bit at a time. So uh, you can always add more on, but it's hard to take it off. Take the paint off once it's on there. If it's too thick or something like that. Okay, and if you do have any stenciling questions, please ask away in the comments. And if I don't get to it now, I will definitely go through and have a look and if there are any questions or anything like that. And don't forget to jump over on my I Restore Stuff page a little bit later on. So you can see the live that I did there just this morning and painting these signs. You'll get to see what was the owl picture that I'm talking about that I changed up and totally recycled this whole thing. So the black words here are actually going nicely with that black stained edge that's already there. I didn't even have to touch that. So there we go. We've got the vintage part on there. Now I'll take my tape off the sides. <clears throat> now, for the embellished part, we are going to put the stencil back on exactly where it was. So see how it's kind of a little bit up this way. So there we go. Nice crisp lines again. I'm going to put this back on exactly where it was and I will... Oh, I'm just kind of a bit hesitant to tape down the sides only because um, the paint was only just painted on there this morning. It hasn't had a really good time to dry. Just going to quickly grab my embossing medium and a little dish or something to put it on. The thing is scurrying. I'm scurrying in my, my cupboard there to find something to put it on with. I can't find my little trowel that I usually use. So what you want to try and do, I don't know why I bought this here, that's fine, we'll just mix it with this, is mix, you can do it a couple of different ways. And on my YouTube channel, I've got a great um, tutorial for how to do this embossing paste and how to use that. Oh, lovely comments. Oh my God, my goodness. I'm um, trying to scroll through. Someone's still having trouble with bleeding. I'm trying to catch your comments. Um, the embossing medium, okay. so. Sherry's asked about that. So this is, Fusion has a smooth embossing paste that's kind of a pearl. This one is the sandstone, which is no longer existing. It's discontinued, but I still have plenty of it. But their pearl one is also lovely. 
So that's what um, let's use that. Okay, so I've just grabbed uh, a bunch of that here. If you can either, so there's, this is what I was going to say, you can either do it a couple of different ways. You can mix this in with a colour of the paint or you can put it on bare and then paint over it afterwards. So what I want to do is kind of mix in a bit of the black colour, see if we can get it a little bit of a black colour paint. I'm just putting that on the lid of a yogurt something, I think. Another recycling idea there. And what I'm going to do is just drizzle Oops, a little tiny bit of the black paint. Probably could make it look a little greyish. We'll see. And again, I can't find my little trowel for stirring. So what I'm going to do is just try my best to stir that. It's so hard when you're going live and you're missing a, it's um, missing some tools or missing something that you know. Oh, I should have thought of that. It's so hard to think of everything. Right, so it's looking a little bit grey, but what we can do is touch it up with black in the end. And even with our vintage sign. We can add some antiquing wax or some black wax and things like that to kind of just create a grungy antique or vintage look. So this is looking more gray, but we'll touch it up with black when we, when it's all dry. So obviously this is not going to dry on the live today, but you will get a good idea of uh, how, how it works as an embossing paste. And actually that is so much there, I probably could have used a third of that. So it's just a really kind of thick medium. Now, Fusion also has a medium called Fresco, and you can that's a powder that you mix with the paint. You can use that to create 3D stenciling. In fact, I've got a 3D stenciling, embossed stenciling video here in Essential Stencils live pages. You'll be able to see that in the live section. You go to all the ambassadors in their video section, and you'll be able to see that. <clears throat> all right, I'm just gonna use this little paint tool you could use a trowel if you like, but I can't find my trowel. So hopefully this will work nicely anyway. And I do want to tape now the vintage sign for a little bit where I may accidentally hit a flourish. So we're taping it back the other way so we don't get that. Oh, lots of new comments. It's a little bit hard to try and keep track of them all. Yeah, there are other, yes, you can use um, any of the chalk paint blacks. You don't have to use the fusion black, that's fine. You can find this paste at any of your fusion retailers. So you just go to fusionmineralpaint.com and find your closest retailer there. <coughs> I should have that in the water. All right, so reminding you that this is gonna turn out a little bit more gray. So it's kind of like a textured paste, but um, there are a few different types around. Okay, hoping this works, guys. Once again, Sharon's winging it on her live. <laughs> Just going to take a little bit at a time. Oops, feels like there's some that's still not mixed in. So I'm taking about this much. And I'm going to just drag it along right where that thing is. And again, I probably should have taped it, but I'm just gonna keep my hand very still on here. <clears throat> yep. And you don't want it to come up or go in underneath either. So that's the trick for this 3D kind of look also, is to just spread it on without Getting it underneath the stencil. Does that make sense? There we go. So you're kind of laying it on and trying not to drag it underneath the stencil, just laying it on top. Now we'll go back over that and grab that top bit, bring it over, and sort of see how my spatula is at a high angle and then as it runs out I bring it down and lay it in and if you miss any bits just go along yeah a 
little bit to go at the end here. And again, just practice. Practice makes perfect, guys. Okay, so I've laid that all on there. It could be a little thick in places. I'm just gonna go back over it. Now this is gonna take a while to dry. It'll dry really well in the direct sunlight. So if you've got way too much, just bring it back, scrape it on. You can use that for later. Go to town on stenciling all your embellishments on furniture and all sorts of things. So just scraping back a little bit of that. It looks like it's gone on too heavy. Whoops. I hope I didn't drag that underneath. off too much okay guys moment of truth <clears throat> let's see and you want to just lift this straight up in the air whoa okay not sure if you can see that I'll just pop that on my paper it's slightly raised oh can we see it I'm trying to get it at the right angle it's a little bit 3D. Maybe you can see that. Oh, are we seeing it? It is raised, I promised you. I promise you. You can see just a little bit of a 3D look there. Hmm. And it's not too far off the actual vintage colour. It's got that charcoal-y look, but then the black here I did a swirly motion, so it's sort of not full coverage. So I'm happy with that. I think that has given a whole new look to that little owl picture that was on there before. <laughs> Again, go check my page. You won't believe what it looked like before this and for the difference. I'll put a little before and after picture on sometime soon. <clears throat> so there you go. You'd learnt today how to create uh, this farmhouse sign out of an old Ikea picture frame that was actually supposed to go like this with glass in it but we've created that and we've also created our vintage sign and remember these flourishes can be used on all sorts of things you can do that 3d idea you could even tape off a part of the flourish and just use this little section here you know so uh, there's so many different fun ideas that you can do with that now with this I'll just scrape that off as soon as I'm finished here on the live and it won't dry too quickly. So remember that stencil, everyone, is the stencil set is called Antiques and it's in the Essential Stencil Shop and no matter what you get today, if you use the code iRestoreStock at the Essential Stencil Shop, you will get 10% off all of your stencils. So let me just have a look in the comments here for a second. Oh, Kim did this technique with lace and joint compound today. There you go. There's a great tip from Kim. So joint compound is another medium that you can use to do that. Okay. So right now I'm just going to have a <clears throat> look through the comments and choose our three lucky winners. Uh, and try and... Yes, uh, Robin says she tried ordering, but they're not sending to Australia at the moment. Yes, I'll mention that again, that Essential Stencil cannot ship internationally at the moment. I think USA and Canada are all that can order from there at the moment. Just due to COVID and shipping difficulties, they have been unable to add that service. So hopefully that's, they said it's only temporary, so hopefully we will get to... Um, be able to ship here to Australia again very, very soon. I just wanted to put this in view so you can all see what we've been working on as I pick out our lovely winners for the day. There you go, there's our two projects. And I'm just going to check on your comments. Um, uh, Kathy asked, did I paint the background with chalk paint? Yes, I did. Just a white, yes, and you can keep the leftover paste for another project. Excuse me, you don't have to throw it away. You could, I would put it in an airtight jar though and just keep a lid on it. It probably won't last too long because the more that air sits there in the jar with it, it's gonna dry out. Yep, um, you can practice on scrap wood or a cardboard or anything like that. So that's a great idea. Uh, let me see. 
Sorry guys, I'm trying to catch all your comments. They're just flying, flying past. I'm scrolling, scrolling. There's my mum. Mum, thank you for watching. <laughs> Big hearts for mama. Watching from the other side of the town. Uh, would wood filler work? Now wood filler may work, but I think it's a little bit more stiff. It's not as flexible and pliable, but if you found something that was quite smooth and pliable, that would be, that would be fine. <clears throat> Uh, yes, Fusion Mineral Paint is sold in the USA. It's, uh, it's Canadian and they sell to the USA as well. Those, you just look up their website and there's a buy, where to buy and you just find your local retailer. Okay. Sorry guys, I'm just by myself here, so I can't help. <laughs> I've got to look through and find three winners. Um, okay. From all over the world, we've got people here. So difficult guys. Oh, and I'm just whoop, 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 trying to find answers to questions as well at the same time. Um, okay, sorry guys, oh, I'm going so quickly. My comments keep disappearing. Someone, Dahlia says that she used joint compound and it cracked. So there's a tip for you. It could, yes. Okay. Oh. Okay, I have three winners, I think. <laughs> you guys, you are so amazing. Thank you everyone for all your lovely comments and thank you for sharing too, the live. <clears throat> up, up here. Thank you so much for sharing the live also. So three winners I've picked out today. It's really tricky. I hate this part because there can only be three. Um, but all the lives, we usually pick out three winners at the end of every live. So Tracy Stiber McLaughlin, you're our first winner today. Brenda Lucas, you're our second winner today. And Sandy Stanford, I believe. Sandy Stanford, you're our third winner today. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget to follow me over on Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, and my Facebook page, all under I Restore Stuff. So find me there. Go check out the live over on my page from this morning because you'll love to see all the different looks that these signs, and don't forget those tins that I painted, just that I found at an op shop. So this had all this floral design on it. I'm gonna do something fun and fancy with that as well. So can't wait to do that. Actually, those flourishes might look great on this corner too, don't you think? All right, guys, thanks so much for watching again today. And I will see you next week when I will be doing something fun with Heidi's uh, Stencil of the Month Club stencils. If you're not in that, you get $5 off your first month if you use the code IRESTOREStuff. So go join. And you too can have some of those fun adventure stencils. I'm Sharon from Iris Still Stuff, and I'll see you next week. Bye.